Good morning. Today's video is about how to slow down objects for a certain period of time. And this comes from the GDevelop forums, um, where the user asks, how can I get it, have a power up that will slow down my enemies for a brief period of time once the user collects it? As always, you'll find a link in the description below to uh, where you can download all the scenes that I'm about to show you. And so this is the end result. Uh, so we have this scene where some enemies are moving around, and it's quite, we are aiming to get over them. It's kind of hard as it is, but if we collect this slow time coin, they suddenly go much slower and it becomes much easier for us to jump over it. And yes, as you've noticed, there is no actual collision. This isn't a game, this is just demonstrating how to um, how do the end result. Inside the scenes, you'll see a couple of things. Um, you'll see, uh, most importantly, you'll see two scenes, one called using layers and one called using variables. And this is because I could think of two ways of going about it. Um, and I wanted to demonstrate both of them, both with advantages and disadvantages. And then you also find uh, two functions, uh, two, well, a function and a behavior. The function is animate player, which just uh, makes a player animate cleanly. And the second is enemy, and we'll get onto that shortly. So let's start with using variables. Um, as you can see, uh, aside from weird glitching, the behavior is basically the same. Um, the way that this game, the way that the scene works is we have these enemies, we have these black boxes called enemy change direction, and every time the enemy comes close to them, it just flips around. And that's all that the enemy behavior does. So in the movement, what it does is it just ray casts from the enemy, and if it collides with um, the change direction box, then just flip it around and move the enemy. Now, the important point here is that if we go into the enemy behavior, its movement is decided by this. So um, we take some kind of scene variable called enemy seed, speed, and we times it by a number. That number lives inside of the, the enemy's properties um, called direction. And so the way that using variable works is whenever, um, whenever the player collides with slow time, what we do is we change the scene variable. So using variables, as it sounds like, there's a scene variable called enemy speed. It's currently at 600. We change it to 100. And after, um, and we start a timer. And after two seconds on the timer, we change it back to 600. Um, and that's how we get the that's how we get the movement to go slow and then go fast. We also slow down the animation scale. So when we collide with the slow timer, we slow it down to half the speed, and then we speed it up to regular. So that's how this example works. We are all we're doing is we're referencing the scene variable speed, um, and when that goes slower, when we manually change that slower, the enemy slow down. When it goes back up, the enemy speed up. And then direction is just a positive or negative, plus one or minus one, um, that we used to decide if we go left or right. Let's compare and contrast it with using layers. So in using layers, you'll see that actually that uh, the code looks similar but kind of different. Um, on colliding with slow time, instead of changing the players, the enemy's animation scale and the enemy's speed, what we do is we set the time scale of some kind of layer called enemy to half, and when the slow time is greater than whatever the end time, however long the duration of it should be, we set it back to one. And the reason which, the way we're achieving this is that we've created a new layer called enemy, and the way layers work is that they are all sort of separate 2D sheets on top of each other. Um, now they can actually collide and interact with each other. So like if the player needed to collide with an enemy, they're perfectly capable of doing that. But what's especially important about layers is they can have different time scales. And so that's how using layers works. When we collide with an enemy, even rather than changing the enemy speed directly, all we say is, um, oh, and just to demonstrate, so for example, enemy is on the layer enemy, whilst player is on the layer base, base layer. And so rather than directly hopping into the variable and changing what the scene variable is and changing um, changing the scene variable and changing the enemy scale, we just say that the particular sheet of layer, the particular sheet layer that enemy is on, should just go half the speed. Um, and that lets us achieve the same effect a little more cleanly uh, when it comes to sort of events and lay, uh, when it comes to sort of events. Because if we had, say, multiple enemies, um, whereas using variables, you would have to 
change the animation scale of all of those enemies one at a time using layers, well, if they're all on the same layer, it will automatically handle that for you. But there is a downside, and the downside is up here. When everyone is on the same layer, um, the camera handling the camera is quite easy. We're just saying if the player is um, a certain point in the screen, then just follow the player. And so this is how we get this sort of moving right effect. However, when you're using layers, each layer moves independently. And so we actually have to move both layers at once. And I'll show you what happens if you take that off. So if you use the exact same camera movement for both scenes, well, now when we go to move right, see what's happening? The, um, the enemies on their separate layer are actually just sort of stuck in place. They're not actually moving. They're not actually in the world, it, and the, the illusion is broken. And the reason for that is, well, because layers, not only do they only have their separate time scales, they also have their separate positions and cameras. Um, and so when, if you're moving one layer, if you move the camera on one layer but not on the other, well, that's how you get that kind of effect. Now, that's not a bad effect. For example, most of the U most tutorials using UI will create a separate UI layer and never touch the camera, and that ensures that the UI always remains on the screen. But that's not what we want for here. We want to sell the illusion that everything is in the same world, which is why we have two movements, one that just sets the base layer camera and one that sets the camera for the specific layer enemy. And so that's how we get the effect that the same effect as before, that the enemy is in the same world. I hope this has been of interest and of use. Um, feel free to uh, give me your thoughts or likes in the description comment boxes below. Uh, and as always, send in your um, thoughts and suggestions for future videos. Uh, I look forward to reading them. Thank you very much, and see you at the next one.